I wanted them to see the bags underneath my eyes. I have lost sleep because I'm not eating. My body um, feels heavy, like it's almost collapsing on itself. I'm putting my body on the line for your job that you're supposed to do, that you promised us to do. And it's our constitutional right to have a, our votes and have them count and have them matter. And so if you can look me in the eye and tell me that it doesn't, then maybe you shouldn't be where you are right now. But I know for a fact there are senators who are on our side who want to see this bill passed. And so I urge you, I'm pleading with you, I'm pleading with the Biden administration to prioritize voting rights now. The window to our democracy is steadily closing. Good evening, Black people and all allies fighting for Black liberation, Black prosperity, and Black joy. I'm Laverne McGee, in for Charles Blow. Welcome to Prime. What a difference a day makes. We've been reporting on this show for months about the mounting frustration over a stalled voting rights bill. But today, it looks like the Biden administration may finally be pumping the gas on the fight to protect voting rights. It all happened fairly quickly. Just as reports came in that the president's Build Back Better bill would likely not get passed this year, so too did reports that the administration would now be shifting their focus to voting rights. The president and vice president wasted no time and unexpectedly jumped on a video call this morning with Senate Democrats. President Biden reportedly told the group to get voting rights done and quickly. The president also just released this statement tonight, which reads in part, we will, we must get Build Back Better passed, even in the face of Republican opposition. At the same time, we must also press forward on voting rights legislation and make progress on this as quickly as possible. Our democracy is at stake. All this comes after a report from Politico stating that the president plans to start the new year with a forceful push on voting rights. The Politico article says that the White House is hoping to mount pressure by connecting the voting rights drive with the upcoming first anniversary of the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol, making the case that the most sacred tenet of America's democracy remains under siege one year after the insurrection. However, Senator Kirsten Sinema reiterated today that she continues to oppose changes to the Senate's 60 vote requirement when it comes to voting rights. Is it possible that if the administration now prioritizes voting rights over Build Back Better and uses the upcoming anniversary of the January 6th insurrection to help build momentum, we may finally see voting rights legislation passed? Well, joining me now for a discussion is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Cliff Albright, and BNC White House correspondent Ariana Manise. Glad to have you both with me this evening. Cliff, you're our guest here on BNC, so I'll ask you first, what do you make of this sudden shift from Build Back Better to voting rights? Yeah, thanks for having me, Laverne. And, and you know, I've been I've been telling Charles this for, for months now. Every time I come on the show, he, he looks at me kind of cockeyed when I say that we are going to get the voting rights bills passed, right? Even, even when Manchin was writing op-eds talking about how it would never happen, I said, we're going to get it passed. Even as Biden was taking his time, I said, we're going to get it passed. And I've always said that, not because I had confidence so much in those elected officials, but because I had confidence in our movement. Because it's always been our movements that have been able to get legislation like voting rights passed, even when presidents and senators didn't want to see it passed. That's the power that we've had, and that's demonstrated itself, along with a little assist. I got to say, coming from Senator Warnock, who gave a, a, in a historic, passionate speech the other day, really calling out his Senate colleagues, especially his Democratic colleagues, for, for not uh, carving out uh, a filibuster for voting rights, you know, for saying for so long it couldn't be done and then seeing them do it for the debt ceiling, and he called them out. And so there's been a lot of forces that have been been in motion. It's been a perfect storm. Even tonight, Senator Hassan from, from New Hampshire, who's been resistant to filibuster reform, just gave a speech on the Senate floor talking about how she thinks it's urgent that we get it done and get it done now. And so there's movement happening. I still believe that we can get it done before the holiday, even though they're talking about taking recess tomorrow. I still believe there's a chance we get it done before they go on vacation because we're saying no vacation without representation. Well, you certainly are an optimist, and I know you can't wait <laughs> to rub that in Charles' face. I don't want to be around when that <laughs> happens. But anyhow, <laughs> Ariana, you've spent a lot of time reporting from the White House on the Build Back Better plan. You know a lot about it. 
Do you think that losing on that issue for now means a win for voting rights is more likely? Because some are saying that with Bill Back better pushed to the side, the president can now fully focus on voting rights and that he needs a win now more than ever. Yeah, definitely he needs a win, especially Democrats. But the only way that this administration can win on voting rights is also winning over Senator Manchin, as well as Senator Kristen Sinema. Those two senators, of course, they continue to pretty much stand firm on how they feel about the filibuster. And the filibuster continues to be top of mind because Republicans they remain quite firm on their opposition for passing any voting rights legislation. Quite often when we talk to Republicans, especially Republican Senator Lindsey Graham each week, he continues to say whatever name that Democrats call a voting rights bill, that Republicans will continue to vote against it. Even Senator McConnell today saying that any voting rights legislation, he says that Democrats are acting as if the sky is falling they're calling it a power grab. So if this administration really wants to win on voting rights and passing legislation, they have to work closely with Senator Manchin and Cinema to see if they will change their stance on reforming or overhauling the filibuster. Wow, we know so much about those two senators. We hear their names all the time, more than ever mm -hmm. before. So Cliff, what do you think about the report by Politico that the Biden administration will use the upcoming first anniversary of the January 6th insurrection to build momentum around voting rights? I know you just said you think you could get it, they can get it done right away, but let's talk about this concept of getting it done around the January 6th anniversary. Yeah, I just think, you know, I, I'm sure that the White House would, would like to use it as momentum, use January 6th as momentum to get it done. What I would say to them is think of how much more powerful it would be if you already had it done by the time you got to January 6th. If you could stand there as you commemorate that horrid anniversary and say, in spite of what they tried to do a year ago, we recently just passed voting rights reforms, which is, which is doubling down on our commitment to, to this democracy. That would be more powerful than using January 6th to go forward on voting rights. So we're hoping it gets done before the end of the year. I believe it can get done by the end of the year. But if it doesn't, then I think January and using that as a, as a launching point. And again, imagine coming up to Cliff, the King holiday. Yes. I was just about to mention that. What about the MLK yeah. holiday? What about the State of the Union? Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of big things there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's also symbolic. Don't forget, you know, Dr. King, even before Selma in 65, you know, Dr. King said in 50-something, in, in he said, give us the ballot, right? And so it would be very powerful. In fact, the King family, uh, Martin Luther King III, is saying that there should be no commemoration without voting rights having already been passed, that we need to rededicate this holiday, not just as community service, which is important, right? But to, to, but to cast this holiday in the context of King's fight, his advocacy for voting rights, and for the entire country to use this holiday for that. So that would be powerful, too. So there are things that could be done in January that would definitely have been symbolic. But again, I'm going to say it again. I'd rather see them get it done before they go on vacation. Yeah, we all would. Absolutely. Um, probably not going to happen. Now, Ariana, do you think that any of this momentum can actually sway Senators Manchin and Cinema to get on board in changing the filibuster? Well, it will be interesting to see if the momentum from President Biden will have any impact on these two senators because we know the momentum is there on the ground and Cliff could speak to this. I've sit next to him at some of the recent voting rights protests and even on Monday, the Poor People's Campaign, they held a really passionate and forceful um, March being arrested right at the steps of the Capitol. So that momentum is there on the ground, but it's all about whether the administration can put their momentum behind it, which is what activists continue to call for. They want President Biden to be more forceful. They don't need any more speeches from this administration. They really want to see the president meet directly with senators like we saw him meet with that infrastructure legislation, as well as the Build Back Better Act, to see if he can be a coach to get this legislation to the finish line and really help Senator Schumer get this done because that's still top of mind for the Senate Majority Leader. He spoke about that today. He continues to speak about that to, that today. Even senators and um, Democratic senators, when you speak to them at the Capitol, they talk about how they really want to build and pass this legislation, but it's the administration, it's the White House. That's where these activists really want to see this momentum coming from. Yeah, the buck stops there. So, Cliff, 
Some are calling for the Senate to publicly debate its rules, including the filibuster, so that Americans can really understand and hear all of the arguments. Do you think that that would help? And should that happen? I mean, I think it would help. You know, I think the, the only thing that it would do, serve to do, is, is to kind of expose, ex expose, I'm sorry, the um, hypocrisy on the behalf of the Republicans, right? To have them, force them to stand there, televised, to, to make the arguments about why they, they're against the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Um, I don't think that that would hold them back from doing so. They've already demonstrated that they're, that they're shameless. Um, so, but it certainly wouldn't help for it to be a public debate. At the end of the day, whether it's public or, or, or not, the main thing is that they that they do it, that they get it done, that they stand firm, that they modify the filibuster, that they do a carve out. And I really want to agree and co-sign on what Ariana just shared. Imagine how powerful it would be. Let's not forget that, that President Biden went to the House, went to Congress twice in order to make the case and almost demand that infrastructure get passed. He's not done that. For voting rights. Imagine if he had gone to Congress and given a speech that Senator Warnock had given, we wouldn't be struggling still with Warnock, I mean, with, um, with Manchin and Cinema. So we need him to lean in. We need the Democratic caucus to, 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 to f finish the job, to get Manchin and Cinema on board. I believe that they're close. I believe that they're close, but the president could do a lot to push this across the finish line. Yeah, it's in, it, I wonder what he's doing behind the scenes. Ariana, I do want to ask you uh, one last question. Um, at the beginning of the show, we showed some video. We had two Gen Z guests on yesterday. They were amazing, mm -hmm. and they're joining Joe Madison in his hunger strike. But the president hasn't met with any of them. Ariana, I'm wondering, you're around these lawmakers every day. Do you feel like there's a disconnect between the administration and what's happening around them? Well, I actually had the opportunity to speak to Representative Jamal Bowman yesterday, and he believes there is a disconnect between lawmakers and what's happening on the ground. And he gave a great example of the fact that yesterday was the last possible day for the child tax credit, and we're seeing lawmakers very slow making progress on passing the Build Back Better Act, which includes a provision to extend the child tax credit. You know, I also spoke, spoke to a mother in New Orleans who, who just spoke about how much that extra $500 helped her. You know, she's moving into the holidays. She says she doesn't know if she can buy her kids Christmas presents because January she may not have that money. So that's just a great example how sometimes this slow action from lawmakers really having an impact on the people. Reverend Barber, he often says that instead of speaking to senators, President Biden needs to bring these activists into the Oval Office so they can really hear how these restrictive voting bills could possibly impact people as we head into the 2022 midterm elections. Yeah, those students were right out there and they were on their hunger strike and they were very adamant about not leaving until voting rights was on the table. So uh, many, many different people from all walks of life wanting to see this get done. But we're out of time. Thanks so much, Cliff Albright and Ariana Manise. We appreciate you being with us tonight.